Hey everyone and welcome back to By Holly G. Welcome to today's video. So I wanted to talk to you guys all about cancer and the immune system. Cancer immunology is literally one of my favourite fields of biology and it is a fairly new field. So I just wanted to have a discussion with you guys and kind of talk about how we know that the immune system is now involved in cancer. But I'm also going to talk about the reasons why people refuted this idea for quite a long time. People didn't believe that the immune system played a role in cancer. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Comment down below if you have any questions as always. And yeah, if you're new around here and you want to stick around for more biology content, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I upload. So I'm sure the majority of you guys watching this video are aware that our immune system plays a role in protecting us from infectious diseases. So those caused by pathogens basically, and a pathogen is a microorganism that causes disease. So like bacteria, fungi, viruses like COVID-19. However, we do now know that the immune system not only protects us against those pathogens, but also cancer as well. It plays a role in protecting us against cancer. And obviously that does break down because we see tumors. You know, if our immune system was able to fully get rid of cancerous cells and prevent them from growing into tumors, then cancer wouldn't be a thing. And the immune system can even promote cancer in normally the later stages of tumor development. So we say that the immune system has this dual role in cancer. It not only protects us, but on the other extreme and somewhat counterintuitively, it can also promote cancer. That might sound really confusing, I know, but the first thing that I just want you to know is that the immune system does play a role in cancer and it plays multiple roles. This was recently recognized in the more recent edition of the hallmarks of cancer. So the hallmarks of cancer basically describe these typical characteristics of cancers and tumors. I actually made a whole video that talked about these hallmarks and stuff. If you are interested, I will leave the link to that video here and down below. The evasion of the immune response is a recognized hallmark of cancer. And what that hallmark basically means is that cancer cells, they evolve to avoid immune destruction. Because as I said, the immune system does initially protect us against cancer. However, as cancer grows and develops and evolves, those cancer cells, those tumorous cells, they acquire characteristics which mean that they are no longer removed by the immune system. And then beyond that, the immune system starts to promote cancer as well. So we have this like complex interplay between the immune system and cancer. It changes over time. It's just so incredibly fascinating and this video will just scratch the surface and basically take a historical perspective really, as I said, talking about the reasons against the immune system's involvement in cancer and the reasons why we now know that the immune system does play a role in cancer, as I said. Just before we go into that though, I wanted to kind of just address why it makes sense that the immune system is able to recognize and destroy cancer cells, so protect us ultimately. And this comes down to this idea of tolerance and what tolerance means is that the immune system won't recognize and destroy our own body cells that obviously breaks down autoimmunity in a normal situation our immune system should not destroy our own body cells because what the immune system has to do is it has to make a distinction between stuff that is self versus stuff that is non-self and it also needs to distinguish between stuff that's harmless and stuff that's harmful and in the context of cancer then tumor cells or cancer cells they are derived from our normal body cells. Our body cells just become more and more abnormal over time, largely as a result of mutations and genetic changes, but a lot of other stuff happens in tumor development as well. But essentially cancer cells are derived from self cells. So at face value, it's kind of like, well, why does the immune system destroy cancer cells if they are technically self, right? But what happens is cancer cells, as I said, they become more and more abnormal over time and they eventually become so dissimilar to normal body cells that they are recognized as foreign. And so the immune system will see them now as non-self and potentially harmful, and so they will remove them. So basically tolerance breaks down. The immune system is able to recognize and destroy tumor cells because they are just so different from normal cells now, and that allows them to be recognized as stuff that should be removed. So now I'm basically gonna talk about some of the main reasons and the main arguments against the involvement of the immune system in cancer. As I said, we now recognize that the immune system does play a role in cancer, but there were lots of scientific arguments based on 
evidence that refuted its role in cancer and i just want to talk about some of these now i will leave some links to key papers down below if you want to do some more reading so one of the first studies in like 1974-75 looks at nude mice and nude mice are those that lack a particular immune cell called a t-cell and so because these nude mice lack t-cells we can say that they're immunodeficient however they're only partially immunodeficient because they only lack t-cells they have all of the other immune cells of our immune system and compared to wild type mice and wild type mice are just normal mice these nude mice lacking the t-cells they were no more susceptible to tumors and when we kind of model cancer we can look at different types of tumors so we can study tumors that develop spontaneously we can also induce tumor development through the use of carcinogens so a carcinogen is a cancer causing agent and in a bit more detail these nude mice were basically no more susceptible to spontaneous tumors and carcinogen induced tumors so a bit later then in 1994 it was argued that cancer cells wouldn't release any like danger signals that would stimulate an immune response. As I said before, the immune system has to distinguish between self and non-self and also distinguish between harmless and harmful. And so something that is potentially dangerous, so harmful, will release what we call damps. And damps are danger associated molecular patterns. This idea was coined by a researcher called Polly Matzinger. She claimed that cells that are basically stressed will release these danger signals, these damps, and that will stimulate an immune response. However, in 1994, as I said, it was basically argued that tumor cells wouldn't release these damps, and so why would they therefore be recognized by the immune system and destroyed? Moving on again then to 2001 slash 2002, it was argued that there would be no protective role for the immune system in cancer because cancer is associated with continuous and chronic inflammation and this inflammation would promote cancer development and so again the immune system would not be able to protect us against cancer because we've got all of this inflammation going on and inflammation was associated with promoting cancer development. So now we're gonna look at some evidence from human studies. So this has come from human epidemiological studies looking at cancer risk. In these large studies, they looked at chronically immunosuppressed patients. So for example, those who have received transplants and are therefore on immunosuppressant drugs to prevent rejection of the transplant. It was found that there was only a very small increase in risk of cancers in these populations. It was around a twofold increased risk of cancer. And it was argued that if the immune system System played a significant role in protecting us against cancer then these chronically immunosuppressed patients would get more cancer. Another reason why people use this to argue against the involvement of the immune system in cancer is because most of that increased risk was as a result of virally induced cancers. Because immunosuppressed patients can't protect themselves against viral infections it means that that virus can then induce cancer. So it's not as if the immune system is directly protecting us against cancer, it's needed to protect us against pathogens and therefore prevent those from inducing cancers. So for example, there was an increased risk of Burkitt's lymphoma, which is a type of tumor caused by EBV, Epstein-Barr virus. And then there was also an increased risk of Carposi's sarcoma, which is caused by Carposi's sarcoma herpes virus or human herpes virus 8, so HHV8. So that's another piece of evidence from human epidemiology, as I said, but we are gonna come back to that study because it can actually be used to argue for the role of the immune system in protecting us against cancer. But we're just gonna look at a paper that was released in 2015, and this argued that mutant cells are not readily removed by the immune system. And cancer, as we know, is largely driven by mutations, these changes to the DNA sequence. When this paper looks at the number of mutations in skin cells, so normal skin cells, it was found that these skin cells can sometimes have very similar mutational burdens to cancer cells so they can have like very similar numbers of these genetic changes however they're not being removed by the immune system and so if the immune system played a role in recognizing cells with mutations and these genetic abnormalities then surely they would remove normal skin cells as well as cancer cells but that wasn't the case these normal skin cells also had mutations that are seen in cancer cells so like cancer associated mutations we could say along those lines then in 2017 a more recent paper claimed that mutations that we call coding mutations are tolerated in cancer cells in that the immune system will just tolerate them it won't get rid of them these like coding mutations will result in the production of 
peptides that we call immunogenic peptides because they are peptides that can potentially be recognized by the immune system. Because cancer is an evolutionary disease, it evolves with some mutations and some traits being selected for if they are beneficial and others being selected against if they're deleterious. We would expect that if the immune system protects us against cancer. Cancer cells would select against the development of mutations that result in the production of immunogenic peptides because it would result in them being destroyed. So we would expect those mutations to be selected against, those coding mutations, but we found that they were actually tolerated and they weren't selected against. And so again, this was just some more indirect evidence against the protective role of the immune system in cancer because as I said, we would expect those mutations to be selected against. So now we're gonna to flip to look at the reasons that support the role of the immune system in cancer. And just like with anything in science, there is always conflicting evidence. There's always reasons for and against something. So we are gonna go back in time to 1998 then and as we looked at, at the very start, I talked to you about nude mice. So mice that were partially immunodeficient because they lacked T cells. And this study in 1998, it looked at mice that were deficient in the production of a particular molecule that we call interferon gamma. Now interferon gamma is what we call a cytokine. A cytokine is kind of like a chemical messenger and they play really, really important roles in the immune system. And mice that are deficient in interferon gamma, so again, they're partially immunodeficient because they only lack this one cytokine, but even still, they were at more risk and they were more susceptible to tumors. They were more at risk of spontaneous tumors and carcinogen-induced tumors. So this was first evidence that supported the protective role of the immune system in cancer and in particular it highlighted the importance of interferon gamma as a cytokine. A similar study in mice then was published in 2001 and it used RAG2 deficient mice. Now you don't need to know what RAG2 does but what I do want you to know is that our immune system is split into adaptive and innate immunity. The innate immune response is basically the non-specific immune response. It doesn't directly recognize what the pathogen is, it will just destroy it. Whereas the adaptive immune response is in some ways more sophisticated because it is the specific immune response, it will recognize specific pathogens. And there are certain immune cells that are really important in this adaptive immune response, namely the B cells and our T cells. And RAG2 deficient mice are deficient in these B cells, these T cells, and also another immune cell called the NK T cell, but basically they're deficient in adaptive immunity. And like the interferon gamma deficient mice, these RAG2 deficient mice were also more at risk of tumors. They were more susceptible to spontaneous and carcinogen induced tumors again. And this study basically showed us that the adaptive immune response must protect us or do something to help protect us against cancer. The last animal study that I'm gonna mention was released in 2002. And this study also used immunodeficient mice. It used mice that were deficient in a molecule called perforin. Now, as I said, T cells are adaptive immune cells and we have a particular type of T cell called a cytotoxic T cell. So a T cell that kills other cells, they're cytotoxic. In order for those cells to be cytotoxic and to kill other cells, they have to release a molecule called perforin. And in this study, in the mice that lack perforin, it was found that as these mice age, they become more susceptible to a type of tumor called a B cell lymphoma. They were more at risk of spontaneous B cell lymphomas. So those are the animal studies, as I said, we're now gonna move on to some evidence from human studies. And the first basically looks at a correlation between the number of tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, so TILs, and that is just basically describing immune cells that are found inside a tumor and patient outcome or patient prognosis. But these studies basically showed a correlation, a positive correlation between the number of TILs infiltrating a tumor and patient outcome. With more TILs inside a tumor, the better the patient outcome. And yes, this is only correlative evidence. There is no causative link between the number of TILs and patient outcome, but it's suggesting that if you have more immune cells inside a tumor, then they are doing something to protect against that tumor growth and protect us from cancer because those patients have a better outcome. We're now gonna go back to the paper that I mentioned before from Human Epidemiology. And this was actually released in 2011 and it looked at that large cohort of chronically immunosuppressed patients. And it actually looked at over 175,000 chronically immunosuppressed patients in the US. And as I said, they found that there was an increased risk of cancer, but that increased risk of cancer was only a twofold increase and it was largely due to virally induced cancers. However, 
As I said, this paper can be used to support the protective role of the immune system in cancer because there was still an increased risk of cancer, as I said, and there was an increased risk in certain sterile cancers in particular, so those that aren't caused by viruses or other pathogens, for example, and those include like melanoma. The main problem with this paper is that yes, it has a very large sample size, but it is only population based. And again, it's only showing us kind of like correlative evidence. We are learning more, don't get me wrong, but we still don't know exactly how certain infectious agents cause cancer. We also don't know whether cancer risk can be influenced by medications. So for example, the increased risk of kidney cancer, for example, was suggested to be due to the medications that certain immunosuppressed patients were taking. Another really interesting thing to note about this paper was that there was actually a decreased risk of breast and prostate cancer. And for breast and prostate cancer, we have screening programs in place. And screening programs are designed to try and detect cancers earlier. And before a patient will be given a transplant, they will be screened often for breast and prostate cancer. And so that might be the reason why there was a decreased risk of these types of cancers because they were being detected earlier and they were being treated before they were even given a transplant. And so that's why in this population-based study that looked at chronically immunosuppressed patients and included those who were transplant recipients, then that might explain the result we saw here, as in there was a decreased risk of breast and prostate cancer. So these results might just be an artifact of cancer screening. The two final pieces of evidence then are most recent. The first has come from research published around 2018, and we basically have real-time videography evidence of a cytotoxic T cell, so a killer T cell, killing a tumor cell. This video, if I can find it, I will insert it for you guys, but we can see that this killer T cell, this cytotoxic T cell, is directly killing a tumor cell. The final evidence then comes from immunotherapies, and immunotherapies are probably the newest types of cancer therapies. They have been a huge success in the field of cancer research, and immunotherapy is basically therapy that uses or enhances the immune system's ability to destroy cancer cells. There are loads of different types of immunotherapies that we have now, for example, like anti-cancer vaccines. We have something called immune checkpoint blockade, which has been particularly successful. And even though lots of patients don't show any response to these therapies, they're refractory. And so we're trying to distinguish between patients who will and won't respond. And they've only shown like really good response in certain types of cancers, like lung cancer and melanoma, for example, for reasons that we're not gonna go into. But in certain patients, immunotherapies have shown incredible results like tumors have been shown to regress when patients have been treated with immunotherapy that is again evidence that the immune system must play a role in cancer the immune system might not be strong enough on its own to protect against cancer and kill cancer cells but when we say enhance the immune response with immunotherapy then it is strong enough to remove cancer cells immunotherapy has a long long way to go and it's a very exciting field so that's kind of everything i wanted to talk about in this video but i just wanted to circle back to what i said at the start so I said that yes the immune system protects us against cancer but over time cancer cells will evolve to evade immune responses and then the immune system might promote cancer as well and because the field of cancer immunology has like exploded recently we have so much more evidence we now have this conceptualized framework which i'm not going to talk about in this video but i will probably talk about in upcoming videos it's called immuno editing and it basically summarizes how the immune system plays a role in cancer and it describes all of its different roles in cancer from being protective at the start normally to then promoting cancer development as tumors become more aggressive and they keep growing yeah it's so exciting and that's why as i said i love this field because it's so new and we're always finding out new stuff but yeah i hope you found this video useful kind of more of a discussion based video as i said leave any of your video ideas and comments down below like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to stick around for more biology with biology and as always i will speak to you very soon in another video bye